From the mixing bowl to the serving plate, we'll explore the life cycle of the striped bass, and we'll fish for this spider in two unique ways. Coming up next. Striped bass is the largest member of the sea bass family. The fish are silvery, shading to olive green on the back and white on the belly, with seven or eight uninterrupted horizontal stripes on either side of the body. Striped bass are native to several rivers in Georgia, though other non-reproducing populations are maintained by the Department of Natural Resources in several inland reservoirs. Typically, spawning begins in the spring when water temperatures approach 60 degrees. Spawning must occur in running river water. In general, at least 50 river miles are necessary to keep eggs in motion until hatching. The Flint, the Savannah, the Ogeechee, and the Coosa rivers all have self-sustaining striped bass populations. These rivers serve as a source of brood fish for the DNR fish hatchery program. This program produces millions of fish each year to stock in rivers and reservoirs statewide. We're at Richmond Hill Hatchery today and we're right in the middle of our striped bass production. And uh, we, we finished our hybrids a few weeks ago. And um, right now we are working through uh, 12 females that we have. And uh, we should be done before nightfall today. So we're right in the middle of it. What you see us doing here, we're just seining the, uh, the female up uh, using a, uh, a fish seine. And um, we'll take the fish and put it into the anesthetic uh, in order to uh, make the process a lot easier for the fish as well as ourselves. A mixing bowl may seem like an unusual place for the first moments of a striper's life, but nearly a million fish will get their start here. After the eggs are in the bowl, we will put the sperm on top of the eggs, and then the, uh, the eggs and the sperm will be mixed together and water added. Um, to initiate the fertilization process. Then we'll take the, uh, the eggs and distribute them into hatching jars uh, where they'll be rolled for very gently for approximately 48 hours before they hatch. Striped bass are favored among sports fishermen and women because they are a hard fighting fish with a tough attitude and the capacity to grow to very large sizes. Nearly $600 million is spent each year on sport fishing activities in Georgia. The reason that we spawn these fish here is that they, they require a river environment to be successful. And we will stock them into our ponds and other hatcheries uh, throughout the state where they'll be for the next 30 days. And at that point, we'll harvest them as fingerlings, approximately an inch long or better. And then they'll go to reservoirs to be stocked. We spawn these fish once a year, uh, usually in early April from our spawning today. We hope to make um, approximately uh, a million fingerlings from this that will be stocked into Georgia waters. There are nearly one million freshwater anglers in the state of Georgia. Nearly half are under the age of 16. The Richmond Hill Hatchery maintains several fish ponds for children and school groups. For many anglers, their first striped bass is caught here. Our ultimate goal is pretty much to outreach to as many kids as possible, especially first-time uh, fishermen, um, and teach them about fishing and, and, and try to recruit them into, into this uh, sport. Biologists observe the striped bass to learn more about their life cycle. One ideal place for study is in the cool water springs of the Flint River. We're in a unique situation down here in the Flint Basin. Uh, adult striped bass have an obligate need for cool water. We have these springs, which are a constant 68 degrees year-round. So come about May each year, when the river temperatures climb up into the 70s, the upper 70s, these adult striped bass will enter these springs, and they'll stay here most of the summer. So this presents us with an excellent opportunity to monitor them. Since we know where the springs are and we know uh, that the adult fish have to be in those springs, we can use scuba diving uh, to do some of our population monitoring. It is hoped that the combination of the efforts of these fisheries biologists will result in a healthy and abundant population of striped bass. 
The Savannah River striped bass population was once the largest in Georgia. Their population drastically declined in the 1980s due to habitat alterations in flow patterns and salinity levels. Tim Barrett and Gabe Gaddis are two biologists ready to get their hands wet and check it out for themselves. We're at Houlihan Bridge, which is in Fort Wentworth. Um, and all the noise you hear and all the cars going over, which is a common, common thing when you're striper fishing because you're usually fishing uh, bridges. So you have to deal with the noise, and the truck horns, and everything. Were you telling me that this fishery nearly collapsed in the 80s? Yeah, in the uh, early 80s, it was really suppressed. And we were stocking to, uh, to restore it in the early 90s, really in earnest. And we try to stock about 40,000 a year. It's good to be involved in the process of, of stocking this river. Um, in the 80s, the population really took a dive, um, and we have since the mid, eight, mid to late 80s, we've been stocking the river with the striped bass. Well, I had a little like, there we go. There you go, there Dave, go. there you go, get there him. Here we go. <laughs> Come on, there El. There we go. Come on. I'll pull you away as much as I can. There we go. Good job. That's a nice fish. That I don't is even a nice think he fish. knows he's caught yet. Oh. Watch him go. Watch him go. Very nice. What you got? Let's at least see. This is an impressive fish. He's look I, at that. I think Did he's got I think he's got you. Look at this. Nice. All right. Get up there, buddy. And he's got he's got a hook where his mouth closed. There we go. Come on. There we go. Very nice. Good work. Thank you, Kevin. Good work. That's a let's see what he weighs. That's five pounds. Five pounds? Here I'll give him to you. fish will gain a couple pounds at least or three pounds this winter as he continues to feed he's, he's been in his spring uh, cool water refuge and so he's just now starting to feed again this fall he looks a little skinny yeah doesn't he? yeah he'll, he'll be he'll be much bigger very nice See, I didn't have more. Yeah, I thought you had about six feet of line yeah. out. Oh, yeah, boy, that's Pretty a good one. Pretty fish. That's a good one. Pretty fish. Oh, right. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. Boy, they just inhale that big rattle trap. It's not much of a problem for them. Nice fish. Here you go, Tim. Another one just hit surface right behind us. We'll get him. <laughs> Tim, what's the weight on that fish, would you guess? Oh, uh, well, I'm not going to guess. I'm going to tell you in just a second. I want to be real careful here because this hook is near his gills. There's another fish hitting surface behind us as we as we take this one as off. As we take this one off.
Okay, got it. Okay. There we go. Very nice. Excellent fish. All right. Good job. I'll tell you what, since you're catching them all, I'll just keep your pliers in my pocket. <laughs> well, let's see if we can catch this other one that's <laughs> on the surface over here that's real a, quick. That's a handy technique you got, right? When I'm taking your fish off, you're throwing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that? I love it. It seems to be productive. I'm gonna have to come over. Look at that one. Oh my goodness. I got them. I got you them. Got I mean, my real broke, I oh. think. Oh, Man. you got a beast too. Yes, I do. It's not just the little 17 line <laughs> fooling. This is, <laughs> this is, this is a nice fish. Stuff. Wow. We, we ran out of trolling motor power and had to start the boat because these two fish were pulling us through the bridge. Okay. Look at this creature. Dave's got one on. Just as big. Come here, buddy. I think this guy just broke my reel. Look at these monsters. Well, Tim, I think this is proof you don't have to go to Lake, Lake Lanier to have a good striper day. Nope. Double. You, it's, it's kind of a rare occurrence to get two fish um, at once, and especially two that, that are over 10 pounds. And I think we had about 30, 35 pounds between those two fish, so that was a that's a rare treat. Striper fishing is also popular on some of the reservoirs of Georgia. We're on Lake Lanier today with Randy Edwards, a veteran striper fishing guide, and Ken Duke, an editor for Game and Fish magazine and an avid bass fisherman. Ken, you need to look, rub a little bit of magic on these things. You gotta get that bass fishing karma out of here. You know? Yeah, I hear you. I know that Lanier has had stripers in it for some time. When were yes. they introduced? 1973 is when they was first, you know, brought here, and uh, you know, and they was here for quite a spell. So they had a chance to get really big before fishermen like myself, you know, discovered. You know, mm -hmm. we knew they'd put them in, but didn't really know what to expect, you know, and it's just, uh, and they have surpassed our expectations. It seems like every year. I mean, they just keep coming on strong.
striped bass are hard fighters. They may even exert themselves so hard that they die from the stress of being hooked. This is particularly true in the summer. The best way to avoid this is to immediately release a fish that you don't intend to keep. While a fish may not die immediately after being caught, studies show that fish may perish a week or even two weeks after being caught. How's it good? Yeah. <laughs> you want me to take this one? I just jumped on it, but you you might want it. This guy's not going anywhere for a while. Wow. Wow. Hmm? Get that one. Here, sure, you take this one. Oh. You're the expert. You got one too, we got doubles on. Oh, mine came off. Oh, it is. Come on. Sure? Yeah, yeah. Bud, about time for you to come in here. Got him. Got him. Pretty nice fish. Nice stalking down here. He's not wanting to come up. See what yours is bigger, isn't he, Randy? Feels like it, but you never know these things. That's what we're looking for. Man, he wanted that thing, didn't he? That's a good fish. I think yours is just a little bit bigger than mine. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. What does yours weigh, Randy? 14 pounds. Is that all? Boy, that's a good fish. That is a fat fish. Take a look at that belly on that fish. Yeah. Turn you know, around if you can. He very possibly could bump 16 pounds. Trolling is an easy way to hook a striped bass, but you may only keep 15 striped bass per day from Lake Lanier, and only two of those can be over 22 inches long. Where are you, fish? He's just stalking down there. Do I hurry him up, or do I? No, just you can wind, wind. If you can't, just hold him. He's just going to do what he wants to do anyway. About to catch a glimpse of him. Yeah, he's coming up. There he is. Start bobbing. He's just mean. Yeah, he's not as big as yours. He just thinks he is. He is a bad boy. That's what's great about these things. It, they don't have to be a monster fish. They all have an attitude, fight. don't they? Yes. A bad attitude. He thinks he's big, and I think that jig is barely in his mouth. Yes, it is, and I don't like he's wearing it like stuck. a mustache. Oh, man. Not a lot of size, but a lot of attitude. Man, he, he was bad. Yeah. Nice fish. I thought he was much bigger than that. I thought he was twice that size. Easy. You got it, too, for the amount of line he took. But, of course, the boat didn't pull any of the fight out of him. You just letting the bait out. So, see, these other fish get pulled down with the boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're just letting out and hit one like that, he's got no surge took out of him. So you got the whole fight. Gotcha. Gorgeous fish. Makes a lot of sense. See if he'll head for the bottom for us. There he goes. 
Today we're going to make a simple recipe with a white striped bass and pineapple mango salsa. White striped bass is a very light flaky fish so it's important to use a sauce or a salsa to go with that that's not too flavor intensive with nice light fresh ingredients. So my choice today was to make a pineapple mango salsa and we're going to get started with that. I'm going to dice uh, the mango. We'll make it a pretty fine dice because our fish are in, uh, cut in relatively small fillets. You can use any type of fruit that you would like um, in your fruit salsas. You could use watermelon and pineapple. You could use berries or strawberries. There are a lot of different great flavor combinations. So that is always up to you. Now we'll add in our pineapple. And it's always best to use fresh, definitely. If you're tempted to use a canned pineapple, as long as you can find a fresh one in the market, I'd always go for fresh ingredients. Especially when you have only a few ingredients, it makes a very big difference in flavor. Okay, and we want about equal proportions of pineapple and mango. Now we're going to add some red onion. One important thing to remember when you're um, chopping up onions is to leave the root end of the onion on. That'll hold your onion together. So regardless of how you're going to chop it up, it won't fall apart on the cutting board. So we'll cut the stem end off and then cut it in half lengthwise. And to dice it up, I'm going to follow the lines of the onion. They're natural lines that go all the way around. So I'm just going to sort of cut a fan around the middle of the onion. And notice I'm not cutting back through the other side. And that will hold your onion together nicely. And you have a nice, simple dice. And for the onion, stronger ingredient, you want to add as much as you'd like. Um, not as much as there is pineapple and mango. Fresh herbs are always nice in salsas. We're going to use cilantro today, which is a very traditional um, herb to use in a salsa. It's a nice, light, fresh flavor. So now, better to use a very sharp knife because as you're chopping your herbs, you actually want to slice through them and not mash them. If you mash them, then you're going to release more liquid from the herb itself and it's going to brown much more quickly. So we'll chop our cilantro. Okay, it's got some fresh cilantro here. Add a little bit of that in. A couple more ingredients. I'm going to add in some fresh lime juice. I'm also going to add a little bit of lime zest for just a little more kick. A nice light zest that we don't have to chop any further. So I add a little bit of that in. Add a little bit of lime juice. We're going to also add some orange juice, about a quarter of a cup or so. And then we'll add just a little touch of honey to it, just to give it a little more sweetness. And then we'll stir it up. That is a very simple, light, fresh salsa. So now that our salsa is finished, we'll let that sit while we grill our striped bass. Now for this, you want to have your grill on high heat, whether you're indoors or outdoors. For great fresh fish, a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. It's basically all that you need. So we want to put salt and pepper on and season the fish before we cook it. A little salt and pepper. Okay. And then when grilling fish, um, you always want to go with skin side where the skin on the fish was up because that will give you the best presentation. So put the meat side or the inside portion down first and we'll get some nice grill marks that way. Now this fish is uh, relatively thin so we're going to probably cook this on two minutes for each side. While it's cooking um, on the first side, We'll let it cook for about a minute and you'll see the white coming up along the edges. At that point, we're going to turn it a quarter of a turn and that's how you get those really nice grill marks on the fish. So we'll do that. Um, so a minute, we'll turn it, another minute, and then we'll flip it over and finish cooking. Now we're going to turn the fish a quarter of a turn. So we'll get those nice grill marks we were talking about. A lot of people are worried about undercooking fish. And um, the key to it with any meat, really, is to have it just done. If you overcook it, it's going to dry out, get dry and real flaky. Um, 
so we want it just done so it's still nice and moist and tender. So definitely don't walk away while you're grilling your fish. Okay, so now we're ready to flip over our fish and finish cooking it. Okay, now that our fish is just grilled, we're going to plate it with our pineapple mango salsa. All right. Add a little salsa across the top. Have a very nice, light, fresh, easy dinner.